We now move to the election of 2024 Southern Baptist Convention Pastors Conference Officers. Before that we make nominations, I would like to go over our adopted procedures for voting. We respectfully ask that only current and retired pastors who are likewise registered messengers for the 2023 SBC annual meeting participate in the election of officers. Eligible voters may receive a ballot at guest services located at the back of the convention hall. All nominations shall be made from the podium. Nominations for president are limited to three minutes. Those who are voting for the pastor's conference officers must be in the meeting hall when the vote is administered for their vote to be eligible. Mismarked ballots or ballots improperly submitted shall be declared invalid and will not be counted toward any nominee or considered in the overall tally. We have a nomination for president. Today, it's my privilege to nominate Stephen Rummage as the next president of our Southern Baptist Pastors Conference. Like you, I've attended this conference for years and have greatly benefited from those who have led us so well before. As we look to the future, I believe that Dr. Rummage is uniquely qualified to plan next year's meeting. In my view, he and his wife, Michelle, represent the very best that Southern Baptists have to offer. Stephen's credentials are impeccable. He received a PhD in preaching from New Orleans Seminary. He's taught preaching in three of our seminaries. He's written two books on preaching, and he's delivered numerous academic lectures on the subject of preaching. But more importantly than all of that, this brother can flat preach the word. And I am confident that he knows the kind of preaching that will encourage and challenge our pastors next year. When I think of him, the first verse that comes to my mind is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, which says, as you know, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. For years, Stephen Rummage has modeled that verse faithfully walking through the Bible one verse at a time. In addition, he is a committed Southern Baptist. Quail Springs, where he pastors, is a leader in cooperative program giving. The last two years, his church has given more than $1 million annually to our cooperative mission. Every church that he has pastored has been a leader in baptisms. In addition to his service at the local level, Dr. Rummage has also availed himself to denominational leadership when asked. From 2016 to 2018, he served as the chair of our Southern Baptist Executive Committee. At the same time, in 2017 and 18, he served as the president of the Florida Baptist Convention. He has the mind of a scholar and the heart of a pastor. Stephen Rummage is a committed Southern Baptist. But more importantly than any of that, Stephen's humility is refreshing. Far too many of us can, as Junior Hill once said, strut setting down. I'm grateful that that cannot be said about my friend Stephen Rummage. He is kind and enjoyable to be around. Embodying the example of Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, which says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Stephen Rummage does not need to be the center of attention. He cares deeply for other pastors. In fact, he has not sought this role. It was only after months of arm twisting he agreed to let his name be submitted. I'm never around him without wanting to be a better preacher, pastor, and Christian. So I hope you'll join me today in affirming and celebrating Stephen Rummage as our next president of this pastor's conference.
We have no other nominations, so I move that we elect Dr. Rummage by acclamation. If you would vote for Dr. Rummage to be the president of next year's Pastors Conference, would you raise your ballot at this time and say amen? Amen. Congratulations, Dr. Stephen Rummage, your 2024 SBC Pastors Conference president. It will be up to Dr. Rummage to appoint his officers, and once he does so in a timely manner, he will report back to us. Now, at this time, I am going to ask that you would turn your attention to the screen. Many of you who were with us last year remember praying for Aaron and Christian Collier. She was weeks away from a major surgery due to an invasive form of cancer. For those of you who are with us in Anaheim, she prayed that God's will would be done and that he would receive all the glory. And we prayed last year for her and for her family. So at this time, if you would, turn your attention to the screen. My name is Pastor Aaron Collier, and I'm the new pastor of First Baptist Church in Wimberley, Texas. I'm here with my sweet bride, Krista. And you, you may recognize us from last year in Anaheim, our good friend, Pastor Matt Hensley, brought us to the platform during the pastor's conference uh, to pray for us two weeks before my wife walked into a major surgery involving breast cancer. What we wanna do is just say, thank you for the prayers, but give God all the glory for the miraculous way that he's answered them. You prayed and God answered. Um, this is who our Heavenly Father is. When we left Anaheim last year and we headed into one of the biggest trials um, that our family has ever faced. Um, and I was so comforted by the words of Isaiah in Isaiah 41.10 where God says, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I clung to those words as I sat through so many appointments, um, so many meetings, learning more and more about this stage two invasive cancer, learning that I, I for sure was going to need chemo and radiation. And um, as I walked into those appointments, we just prayed and asked God to do something that the doctors would not be able to explain. And he did. We walked into my double mastectomy surgery, which was an incredibly hard surgery. And as we went to the recovery room after that surgery, the doctor came in and he said, well, I can't explain it, but there is no cancer in your lymph nodes, no radiation. He said, it, it's not explainable, and we said, yes it is. It's our God. We have thousands of people who have prayed over me and over this cancer that the Lord would do something miraculous. And then months later, the Oncotype score came back and we were able to see God's hand at work again. The Oncotype score is basically a score that takes all of the factors um, such as age and genetics, um, which I had a genetic component, uh, the invasiveness of the cancer, and it determines whether or not chemo would be something that you need to walk through. And for months, the doctors had said, prepare yourself, you're gonna walk through this. And we went to MD Anderson in Houston, Texas, and the doctor walked in and sa said, no chemo. Your oncotype is 17, and chemo would have been 26 or higher. And we were able to just rejoice. And both the nurse and the doctor looked at us and said, it doesn't make sense. I, I remember asking the doctor, I said, scientifically, can you show us? Uh, because the same tumor that was biopsied a month and a half earlier uh, scored off the charts with cancer and this uh, invasive type breast cancer. I said, can you show us parts per million there were more cancer cells in the biopsy than in the tumor? Because what we asked for last year is for God to do a miracle. We asked that he would do something. Ephesians 3 says that he can do uh, 
more than all we ask or imagine. God is able to do that kind of thing. And I asked the doctor, I'm sure there was less cancer in the tumor. And this is what the doctor told me. They said, we can't prove that scientifically, but you would not be wrong to say that God minimized your wife's cancer. And what I want to celebrate in this room and every other time my wife has the opportunity to share this testimony is God is still in the business of doing miracles. And finally, I just want to say, you know, there are many of you in the room last year that were also praying over hard situations. And some of you may have seen God move in huge ways and answer those prayers. And some of you may have seen God answer in an unexpected way. Um, but I cling to the words in 2 Corinthians that Paul wrote when he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. We have been comforted in the midst of our affliction and we are longing and looking forward to the day where those afflictions will be gone right. when Christ returns. Right. But until that day, we as pastors and pastor's wives have the opportunity to continue to comfort others with the comfort with which we have been comforted. Amen. Let's continue to do the work that Christ has called us to. So we wanna praise God with you uh, because he did glorify himself in this situation. I wanna thank you for praying and I wanna thank Pastor Daniel Dickert as well for giving us an opportunity to report on how great our God is. Thank you so much for praying. Never stop praying. That's what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that, that we should pray without ceasing Let's be that kind of church. Let's be those kind of brothers and sisters that always look for an opportunity for God to show up and show off and then use us to show others the love of Christ. Praise God for what he's done. We want to thank the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary and Nate Jernigan for leading our afternoon session in music and worship. This evening, the doors will open at 5.45 p.m., and we will have a pre-service at 6 p.m., and our service and final session will begin at 6.30 p.m. Make plans to be here as we will have pastoral talks from Jimmy Draper and Phil Newton, as well as a final message from H.B. Charles. For the full schedule, you can go online to sbcpc.net. Let's close together in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for what we've heard today, the beatitudes of a pastor, character matters in ministry. Lord, we've been reminded that we can't, but you can and you live in us. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, tonight as we have our final session, that we would be encouraged by the preaching and teaching of your word. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.